Is joining me now, retired NYPD Lieutenant Darren Porcher. I want to go in reverse order here and start with the situation now. What do you make of the way police are handling it? Well, I think it's one of these, it's a combustible situation that police could have avoided. One of the key components here was the police were not in touch or not in tune with the intel from the community. And that's a significant component in policing. 90% of policing is service related, 10% is enforcement. But that what service that mean? related piece. Not is in how, touch with intel from the community. What does meaning that mean? Meaning they have to be able to determine the pulse of where the community stands. If this was an aberration, you wouldn't have had the outcry that you had. However, apparently this, there's been rumblings and overtones for a period of time that led up to this. So this situation created the combustible um, instance that we have right now. Are the rumblings or overtones about race? Because the police officer who shot him was also African American. I, I don't believe race is the issue here. I think that the police department should have gotten in front of this much earlier and been more transparent. But however, I don't believe it's race. I think it's more of an issue of policing in the community of Charlotte. Right now, one of the issues is what exactly happened. People are calling for video to be released. I just want to share the SOT because there's really two different accounts. Police who have said he had a gun, his family said he didn't. Take a look. A weapon was seized, a handgun. He didn't have no gun. And we did not find a book. No gun, it was a book. The officers gave loud, clear, verbal commands. If he got out his truck, and walk behind his truck like this and ask the, was asking the police what is the problem. Exited his vehicle armed with a handgun as the officers continued to yell at him to drop it. Pow, 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 pow. That's it. I realize an investigation is going on right now, but these are two very different stories. Now, we saw an image where there was a gun or appeared to be a gun on the ground. Why wouldn't they just release the video? Absolutely. And settle this? It's real easy. And it goes back to what I mentioned in connection with transparency. This is a public place. There's no expectation of privacy. Oftentimes, when you see police investigations, they're very quick to release the name of the defendant, the name of victims, with the exception of victims of a sexual assault. However, here, it had the police department just released this information up front, we wouldn't have had the combustible situation that we have. Um, I hear conflicting statements in con connection with a gun or a book. Would it, that, if that may have been the case, fine. But introduce this video earlier. Early. That way the community can make that assessment and more than likely they wouldn't have erupted in the manner that they did. Then as someone who's been a member of the police department, again, it's somewhat of a guess. Why do you think they haven't? And it goes back to the transparency issue. And this has been it inherently negative trait within policing. Police have to be far more transparent in introducing these issues to the public. Before, that way, people won't react the way they do. Because a lot of it is questioning the unknown. But if the public has some level of understanding of what happened, then it makes it so much easier for police to navigate through whatever the story is or the narrative that we have present. Darren, thanks for your work. Thanks for sharing your thoughts. Darren Porcher. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.